Once again, I welcome you for viewing Choose in Christ broadcasts. This program is designed with you in mind to inform, to edify, strengthen, and build you up in the Word of God. And I encourage you each time to join me as we examine God's Word. Today's lesson is taken from the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3. We say 1 through 13. And it's entitled, The Mystery Made Known. Ephesians chapter 3, 1 through 13. The Mystery Made Known. And so I want to encourage you to jot down the scriptural references that I'll be sharing and to go over the scriptures just to check and make sure that what I'm quoting and what I'm saying is not only in the, in the book, but it's also in context. So let's get into today's lesson. We're talking about the mystery. What do we know about this mystery that Paul is talking about in the book of Ephesians chapter 3. What do you know? I encourage you to do your research concerning this mystery. In an ordinary sense, a mystery is imply knowledge hidden or withheld. The mystery back then and now is the same as some people would say, you know, um, it's a secret. It's a secret. It's, it's the hidden things. There were those who was saying that they had knowledge from God, which only God alone revealed to them, and they alone know about it, so it's, it's a secret. Today we have secret societies. People who are claiming to have received revelation from God, and only them have received it. Same story that was going on here. But the New Testament significance of this mystery is truth revealed. What Paul and the other apostles are going to be telling us about this mystery is that that which was hidden is now made known, is now revealed. And that's what he's saying here. How that by revelation, God made known to Paul the mystery as he wrote briefly in few words. Lord on, he talks about the mystery of the fellowship, verse 9, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hid in Jesus Christ. I want you to understand the idea, the concept behind this word mystery. In the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, Paul is talking about his ministry, the fact that he was called. Pick up from verse 25. He said, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you, the Gentiles, to, f to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generation, but now has been revealed to his sins. So I want, you to, I want you to see and I want you to understand that which was concealed, hidden, 
is now revealed. And so as we talk about the mystery being made known, the three points that I want to share with you is how was it made known? To whom was it made known? And how is it being made known today? Those are the three points that I want to share with you and the lesson would be yours. So let's talk about how was this mystery, the secret, this, the hidden things of God made known in the first century? Paul said, by revelation, God made it known by revelation. God revealed, he uncovered, he manifested, he made known, he declared this mystery by revelation. And, and when we talk about revelation, we're talking about in the two, the two areas of revelation is by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to talk about the role of the Holy Spirit in making known the mystery of God. And secondly, by the preaching of the gospel. Here are the two areas that we find in Scripture how the hidden things of God is being made known. In the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21, 20 and 21, he says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. But holy men of God spake as they were moved or as they were guided by the Holy Spirit. We, are, we understand that, that the meaning of the word move here is God breathed. God inspired. So the mystery was made known by revelation, and the revelation is through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. God used the Holy Spirit to reveal his will, to reveal his secrets, to reveal his plan, to reveal his purpose. We turn to the book of First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 2, Paul again is explaining the work of the apostles, the, the work of the, the apostles in the lives, the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the apostles. And from verse 6 he said, However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom from, he said, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the age for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. He continues, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit search all things, Yes, the deep things of God. The deep things or the hidden things of God. For what man knows the 
things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. He says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. And I encourage you to continue reading the rest of the passage. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 to about verse 16. Read the whole thing, end of the chapter. Before Jesus left, he said, it is, it is expedient that I go for if I don't go, the comforter wouldn't come. When he has come, he's going to guide you into all truth. And the you there is referring to the apostles, those who you are speaking to at that time. He's going to bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. This was the promise of Jesus. The mystery made known. How was it made known? It was made known by the revelation or the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit revealed things unto his chosen apostles and prophets. It is also made known through the preaching of the gospel of Christ. Through the preaching of the gospel of Christ. And again, if we would refer to our text, um, Ephesians chapter 3, in verse 6, he says that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of the promise in Jesus through the gospel. To the preaching of the gospel. To the good news of the gospel. We know that the gospel is the message. It's the message about Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. The heartbeat of the gospel. The center of the gospel deals with the death, burial, and resurrection. But this was foreordained before the foundation of the world. We can go back to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 when God first prophesied that he was going to redeem man, he was going to save mankind after Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, he said, the seed of the serpent is going to bruise the heel of the seed promise. But the seed promise is going to bruise or crush the head of the seed of the serpent. And we see there a prophecy concerning Christ coming into the world. But even long before that, we go to the book of Hebrews chapter 2, and about verse 10, where the Bible tells us, For we became him by whom are all things, and through whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. We see here in Hebrews chapter 2 that it, it began in the mind of God. Long before Adam and Eve were even created, God had foreseen the events that would follow. And he made a plan to correct the wrong that would take place in order to have what he wanted, many sons in glory. So, this mystery that is made known is made known by revelation, first of all, through the Holy Spirit, until, we're going to deal with who just now, but it's through the Holy Spirit. And secondly, by the preaching of the gospel. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 
Jesus said, go teach, preach, baptize, teach again. Matthew chapter 28. In Mark 16, 15, and 16, go preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. In the book of Luke, Luke 24, 47 and following. And repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. We've seen the gospel being put forward. And John chapter 20, verses 21 and following, it said to the disciples, go remit sins. Whoever sins you remit, they are remitted indeed. Whoever sins you retain, they are retained. And so, we, we need to appreciate all right, the gospel, the preaching of the gospel, the specifics in the gospel. And I, I, would, I would make the point here, as you study this chapter, and you study the mystery, and we are learning that it was revealed through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I would dare to say that the Spirit has no need to repeat that which he has done already. If you follow with me carefully. Second Peter chapter 1. God has revealed or he had given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who had called us to glory and virtue. If the Spirit revealed or made known what the mystery was and that was documented, the Spirit does not need to be repeating himself anymore and i just leave you with that and let you think about that let that you know soak into your minds so when it was revealed to the holy apostles and prophet paul said he wrote it down he wrote it down so the christian in the first century had the revealed word, the revealed message, not through inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but now they will have to study to show themselves approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. That's what the young evangelist was told. They were told to preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, exhort. Rebuke with our long suffering and doctrine. The Holy Spirit was used to reveal the mystery, and the gospel is being preached to make known the hidden things of God today. Who was this? Reveal too. Well, we drop down in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, and we are looking at verses 3 and 5. How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. To the holy apostles and prophets, inspired men, God has spoken in time past. He's speaking today. But he, he does not have to speak in the same way 
that he did in time past to be the same God. The Hebrew writer tells us that. He says he's speaking unto us through his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus, who walked the earth, spoke to some men. He preached to everybody, but he chose a special group of men who he was going to train, who he was going to discipline and disciple, and then he was going to send them out to preach the word, his word. He was not leaving it up to their memory because he told them that he was going to go, and when he goes, he's going to send the comforter, who is going to come and help them. Remember all that he had taught them. So the holy apostles and prophets, these are the ones that the mystery was revealed to. Isn't it strange that we have so many people claiming to have received inspiration from God directly from God not even through the Holy Spirit we see that during Paul's conversion um, Jesus had an appearance made an appearance and spoke to him but it was through the revelation of the Holy Spirit that Paul received the information as, a, as an apostle of Jesus Christ. So I want to include, according to, according to the book of, is it Colossians? I was just reading a while ago. I'm going to go back to, to Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 2. I believe he made mention of the saints. He says, these things we also speak, not in the words of which men wisdom teach it, but which the Holy Spirit teach it, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Because the natural man cannot understand or receive the things of God. Because they are foolishness to him, the Bible says. The things of God, the wisdom of God, is foolishness to the carnal man, to the natural man. But to the child of God, to the Christian, their wisdom, their, their cherish. And that's what I want you to understand, that the mystery, having been revealed, was revealed to, first of all, the apostles and prophets, and then it was passed on to the believers, to Christians, as have been mentioned a while ago, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John go preach, teach, um, teach faithful men so that they can preach, continue to teach others also. This is what we're talking about. 
And then we need to ask ourselves, where is the gospel or the mystery being made known today? Where can we find the mystery? How can we know about this mystery? And I want to go back to the text, Ephesians 3, and we're going to look at verse, you can pick it up on verse 9. Paul said to me, who am least than who, who I am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given to me that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hid in God who created all things to Jesus Christ. Verse 10. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to his eternal purpose by the church. Now the church is the ecclesia, the called out. Those who have been called out of the world into fellowship with Christ are the ones who are asked to go back into the world and to let the world, to make known to the world the hidden things of God. How are they going to do that? They have to study. They need to study. They need to rightly divide the word of truth. They need to apply it into their lives. And they need to let mankind know. So, beloved friends, the mystery, the mystery is made known. It's not a secret anymore. It's not something somebody have in their back pocket and them alone know about it. We all can know about it. It is revealed in the Holy Scriptures. If you have your Bibles, you can go through it, you can search it, and you'll find what the mystery is all about. In a nutshell, it's about the love of God. John 3.16, Christ coming into this world to save you and to save me. And I hope that you will take the time off, look over the passages, study the subject, and get a better understanding of the secret things of God that are no longer secret. Till the next time, I bid you Godspeed.